Hello YouTube. Hope everybody's doing all right today. Uh, it's been a while since I did a tabletop review, so I figured it was uh, about time for one. I'm going to have competitive options to this blade near the end of the video. This is a Daniel Coster Bushmaster. There's supposedly a one to two year, I hear both, one to two year waiting list and it's $305 for the custom model. This is the custom model of the Bushmaster. Okay, um, it comes with, uh, they, they had sent them to a certain company. Just leave it in the comments if you want to know where to get it. Uh, anyway, it comes with a, a sheath that's pretty much Bark River-esque. It's, I think it's the same company that makes all the leather sheaths for Bark River. Nothing special, but it, I have two of these knives now, and I haven't touched this one yet, but if you put snow seal on it, and <clears throat> apply five or six coats. This will turn extremely dark brown with an orange brick, rusty orange tint, which makes it phenomenal looking. I don't have it because it's in my other vehicle. And my wife has that right now. So anyway, onto the knife. You have orange G10 scales. You have titanium rivets that are bee blasted. That's why they look dark gray. You have a stone washed 3V blade. Now, uh, this is my second take on the video. This is my trusty old ruler. So, I'm going to let y'all just take my word on it. Because it makes the video too long when I sit here and measure. This blade is 5 inches precisely. Okay? 5 inch blade. And a 4.85 inch handle on mine. So, you're pushing, you're right around 10 inches for the whole knife. Which is about perfect for me. Now, you lay it on its side. And you say, first of all, check out that. Not too much palm swell, not too little. And I love the way the palm swells like the Siebert up toward the front, but not overly done like the Siebert. I think the Siebert, Shane Siebert model from Benchmade is 0 0.90 inches, I think. Um, this one, actually I forgot that measurement. This one's not that thick, so it, it, it makes it a much more... Uh, convenient fill and handle um, let's see you got about you got about uh, um, a little over three quarter uh, three-fourths of an inch so is it maybe the Shane Seaver is an inch because uh, I'm fixing to show you the comparison in a minute the jimping is outstanding I mean I, I couldn't have asked for better it's not too deep as to compromise the steel, cause mic micro fractures or anything like that. Not that 3V would be more susceptible to that than certain other steels, but because 3V, I, I kind of look at it as like rubber. You know, it's not, it doesn't have the wear resistance of S90V or, or M390 or the same thing, 20CV or uh, anything like that, but it, uh, it, it holds true to form, you know, you can you can microscopically or more than that really you can laterally bend this thing You know going through knots or whatever. I wouldn't use any knife as a pry bar, but um, I'm talking about going through knots and stuff and in here in the south you go through an oak knot, you know it I mean you're you're pounding the heck out of that thing, but uh, It goes back true to form. It's kind of strange but it doesn't have the best wear resistance, but this is the best 3V knife that I've ever used for wear resistance. Um, the black one has got no, uh, no um, show of use at all, and neither does this one. The black one, I've done tons of feather sticks, made four or five fires now, big fires, clearing some, uh, clearing some debris out. And I used it to baton and all that kind of crap just to see what the knife could do. No, it's not deer season here. No, I don't duck hunt and all this. So I didn't use it for any skinning. However, the, the blade does kind of keep its, its belly down this way. Um, the blade is one and one eighth inch starting here. And it starts to taper right here. And about three fourths way down the blade, uh, you it goes to one inch. And then it slowly goes, you know, a drop point and, and tapers off. But uh, also another thing to note is the, uh, on the handle, the steel is three, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, five millimeters or three sixteenths inch um, or 
0.187.5 uh, inches. Uh, there's three different ways to look at it. But I noticed it goes from 5 millimeters to 4 on the spine. I don't know if that was something that Dan um, really intended. Uh, I'm sure it is. I mean, it's uh, it's got perfect geometry. I wouldn't own two of these that are this expensive if I didn't like it. It's the best blade that I've ever used. I can say this blows away the Ambush Alpha. A year ago, I was all into the Ambush Alpha made by Bark River and just thought it was, you know, the end-all, do-all of knives. And I just like the pretty handles. I, I finally realized I liked it because it was 3V and it had pretty handles, you know, and I'm a sucker for satin finish. Well, he makes satin and uh, uh, the stone wash, and this stone wash blows it away too. Let's see if I can get that to pick up. It's nice. I mean, and what's cool about stone wash is it doesn't show all the scratches and things like that. And and yeah, I keep my blades nice looking. I don't know what it is about some people in the YouTube community. I'm not dogging you or anything like that. But people think that you don't use your tools unless they look like garbage. Unless they're rusted and have old pine sap all over them and the handle's all oily looking and you've done sprayed half a can of WD-40 all over it. I mean, if that's your forte, cool. I mean, if you have to prove yourself by having an ugly knife, that's cool. I keep mine clean. Now, this one, I haven't used this one. This is my mint condition for my collection. My black G10 one is the one I've that I've used a lot and I don't have it with me right now. <clears throat> but... I'll digress on that. Um, let's do the weight on it real quick. Like I said, it's almost 10 inches long, five inch, uh, almost a five inch handle and a five inch blade precisely. It's got a small finger tool right here. I would say it, it's about a third of an inch going down, which is plenty of a finger tool, especially for you know a, a, a survival slash bushcraft knife because there's so many bushcraft knives don't even have a, 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 a finger, not choil, but a, a, a guard, I guess you'd call it. Let's see, 7.7 .7 ounces. So really, hold on, 7.65, turn it a little bit. 7.65 to 7.7, .7. that's, that's really not bad. And I have a firesteel.com, firesteel is the only firesteels I use. Um, this happens to be the Armageddon four inch, uh, three sixteenths inch thick or diameter. So it's gonna add three or four ounces to the total weight. So the sheath by itself, if you were to just order it from the place and say, hey, I just want the sheath that comes with it, that uh, Bark River actually supplies. It's 4.1 4 ounces with the fire steel. You might as well take it out. Okay, 2.7 ounces, 2.7 ounces. So 2.7 ounces isn't uh, too shabby. I mean, I, I'm not looking for a, a Kydex sheath uh, for this quite yet. Uh, until the leather sheaths wear out, I'm not worried about Kydex. Now, because I have Kydex, I have tons of stuff with Kydex. I'm kind of sick of Kydex. All right, anyway, uh, I like Boltron better. But uh, Kydex scratches your blade and all that kind of stuff. But there's pros and cons to both. Let me get back on subject. This knife right here is the Blackbird, Ontario Blackbird. I've used this a lot, and you can see scratches in this one. This one's blade. Uh, but it is satin finished and it's easy to clean up Stone wash and satin finish the hardest ones to clean up are the ones with the uh, powder coat um, And and to make look as mint condition as possible again look when I'm when I'm spending it, it, Like this this knife and the tops Bob are the cheapest uh, ones that I in my collection that I use the most uh, And and you're looking at about 125 you know, anywhere from 120 to 130 on them most of the time. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I've, I, I use them a ton, but I still, even on, on these knives, I, I, don't, I don't want them to look like garbage. Now, you can see some wear, especially right along the edge here where I baton. It, you can't help that wear right there. It's just going to, let me back the flashlight off. It's going to show some wear on the powder coat. Um, it first it's like SE knives. It starts to smooth out first before it actually rubs off Which is cool 
um, they, they, they have it on there pretty darn good. And I'm a big fan of Toss Bob. Uh, the only thing I'm not a fan of is the cramps in my hand that I get from using it over a, a period of time because as you can see, there's no big palm, there's no nice curvature in the blade. They got a little bit starting right here, but the main, the main part of the handle that looks like it's anything done to it is right here in the middle. You have about a, a 50 cent piece, maybe not even that circle that just kind of, you know, swells upward and then swells downward here. Um, the, and the bow drill divot's ridiculous. I, I just, I wouldn't use that for a bow drill, but and same thing. Hey buddy, I got my son up. Uh, this back here is supposed to be the, the striker, which y'all know about the toss bob. This isn't a review on that. This is a review telling you about other knives that perform well for the money and they're in the same price, uh, not price range, but size range. Uh, these two being the cheaper ones. Okay. This one is my second favorite uh, bush knife, a uh, knife to use for just all purpose. And I didn't think it would be because the palm swell is ridiculous on it. It's just, it's, I think it's an inch thick. Let me, let me measure that for y'all because I know that the, the coster is not an inch thick. No, I'd say it's uh it's an eighth under an inch. So whatever whatever that would be. Um, the coster is just more. I don't know. It, it it may be darn near as thick. Let's compare. But it carries its thickness all the way down. I'm gonna grab these blades from the front. Hope I won't cut myself again. Yeah, you can see that it's thicker. I mean. But this one carries its thickness further down and then narrows out and doesn't swell out quite as much at the bottom. I do like the swell on this one at the bottom more than the coster. Yeah, that's biting me. All right. Anyway, uh, so that's, that's your, and, and, and with the bench made, you have a lot more of a drop. You see as I lay it on the table, it's touching the table. And when I lay this one on the table, it doesn't. I mean, and it's it's got about the same amount of the finger guard here uh as the other and this one this one has b blasted rivets too so it's just that these are more uh you can tell that they've been ah, i forgot the name for it but squashed basically um i should i should know the name but i don't but anyway the g10 let's talk about the g10 real quick it is i'm feeling both of the g10 it's as grippy as the Seabert, maybe a little bit grippier. I would say it's a little bit grippier than the Seabert. Um, in what way? It, well, it's not that it has more of a sandpaper feel. It has more of a dry feel, if that makes any sense. It, it has more of a dry feeling to, to the G10. Um, not cheap at all. In fact, the Benchmade G10 feels cheaper to me. And uh, this has more of a... Uh, I, I can't really explain it, but... Uh, they're they're very very similar. So if you like the Benchmade, you would love the Coster. Um, that, that's just my opinion though. Uh, this is S30V, 0.16 inches plus the liners, and this is CPM 3V, which is just a little bit thicker at 0.1875. I mean 0.18 set yeah 0.1875, and uh, compared to 0 0.160, but the thing is, is when the blades actually start, if I can get that to pick up, they're about the same size because it drops off a millimeter on the coster when the blade starts. But all I got to say is this, this, this thing feels alive in my hand. It feels like it wants to work. It, 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 it's, it's just light and fast. And this one is too. It's just smaller and there's no jimping. Um, I don't need a finger toll when I have jimping like this because my thumb fits perfect. I have medium to large size hands. I can I can back up on it, and on my black one that I have, I actually have a pinker, pinky lanyard, and I actually was able to chop with a with a knife that's not even you know about half a pound, and a five inch blade, and it's not even that tall of a blade. It's one and one eighth inch blade height, and usually I'm a sucker for a, a tall blade, but uh, not anymore. After I've experienced this, it's just blown my mind. So anyway. Uh, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the review. Um, this is my first review on a full custom knife that wasn't made by my friend Shane Wink. 
Um, I say this guy's fit and finish is phenomenal. It looks machine made. It looks perfect like someone dialed it into a machine and had it done, cut out and everything. And he does all of it himself from what I've read and from what I've been told. And uh, this has been from numerous people that have recommended this blade. And I sharpened it to a 15 degree edge and it holds its edge very well at 15 degrees per side. There is no micro bevel that I put on it. And uh, all I do is drop it when I'm done. And uh, that's it. So I hope everybody uh, got a good understanding of the coster. Sorry if I'm long winded and God bless.